Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining in for the first episode of STEM Sundays with Emily. I'm so excited this is finally happening and to be kicking off with such a great activity. I explained last week this is one of my absolute favorites to do and I can't wait to jump in. So today we'll be building structures made of toothpicks and marshmallows. It's just as easy as it sounds. We'll be using toothpicks and marshmallows. Those are the only two materials you're going to need today to have some fun. I was able to find both of these at my local supermarket. You probably have some in your pantry, I'm sure, which makes that even easier. But either way, very easy to get your hands on these two simple materials. So before we dive into actually building something today, I just wanted to give a little background on why this activity is so important and so fun for me. So I always design bridges when I do this activity because that's what I do in real life. I'm a bridge design engineer and every day I go to work and try to make the bridges in New York State a little bit better for the communities around them. So I think this activity is a lot of fun because I can show people hands-on and in person what my career is all about and what the field of civil engineering is all about too. So also I wanted to give a little engineering uh, knowledge to you guys today about one of the key components in the bridge that I'll be building for you this afternoon. So truss is the word of the day, truss. A truss is a simple engineering design component made of three members. So it's a triangle, truss, triangle, they go hand in hand. So I'll be showing you what a truss looks like and how they are used in bridges. And I challenge you guys to look for some after this activity in your neighborhoods and in your communities, whether it's uh, in bridges or in buildings around you or even in your own homes. So let's jump in, I'm so excited. Okay, let's do it. So get your toothpicks and your marshmallows out. And the first thing we're going to do in building this bridge today is the road. If you don't have the road, you won't have a bridge. So before we get into building those trusses, those triangle trusses, we're going to build the road. So let's get some toothpicks out. I was able to find these fun, they're like multicolored toothpicks. I thought it would just be a nice fun touch for the bridge instead of the regular plain colored toothpicks, but whatever you have around, perfectly fine to use. And I think they go great with these mini marshmallows. It's just a great uh, size ratio. So first we'll have our toothpick, which will be our structural member today. And you stick it right into the marshmallow, which will be our little joint pieces. So we're just going to start with the roadway and that's going to be forming the shape of a square. Most roadways are rectangular in shape. So we're going to build a series of squares in order to make one long rectangle to serve as our road today. And as you can see, I'm just about done making this first square. And you can see how easy this activity is really to put together. So here we have our first square. This will lay flat on our table here. You can see, perfect. And we're going to build a series of squares along as long as you want your road to be. And then we can start building the bridge. So in order to take up less time today, I already pre-made our road. Let me get that out for you. So here is our road that I built. So four squares gives us a long bridge and that we will be using as our, our road today. So now you guessed it, it's time to build our trusses. So what are those shapes? Triangles, triangle trusses. So another toothpick and we'll start by putting it into this first joint piece here. We'll get another toothpick, stick that into the next, next marshmallow and connect the two with, you guessed it, a mini marshmallow. So here we go. Our first truss. See how it's triangular in shape? And we're going to keep going along for this whole row, putting a triangle here, triangle here, and a triangle here. So as I mentioned before, every day I go to work as a bridge engineer. I'm so happy that this is my job every day and I have such a great, such a great time learning about the communities that I'm working in and see the end result. My first bridge ever actually was just finished for construction this summer and I'm going up in a few weekends to finally see it. Hopefully it doesn't snow up here in New York. It probably will, <laughs> but I'm excited to see my first ever bridge be built in real life since graduating college. And I look forward to building even more. It's not a truss, but 
for me, it's a big achievement to see my first actual bridge be built from design to construction. So here we go. We have our four triangles. Here we can see that. And then we're going now to connect each of these marshmallows with a toothpick again to connect them all. If we left them like this, they might tip or lean, and we wanna make sure our bridge is safe and sound. So we'll take three toothpicks and get this all straightened up. And one of my favorite things about this activity is that once you get your structure built, whether that's a bridge or a house or whatever your children come up with for a design, if you let it harden for a couple hours, even uh, overnight, it's gonna get really rigid and it'll be perfect. You could actually put a piece of paper down and drive a car around it. And I think it would be just a great activity and a, and a new toy that's pretty cheap for you guys. So here we go, we have our, our trusses connected up here. And then you're, you're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So we have our four trusses here on this side. Now we just need another side here. And again, I've already pre-made mine. So let's take a look. Here it is. So we have both sides done. Mine's a little slanted, <laughs> that's okay. I promise they're not like that in real life, but so we have our trusses four on each side, one, two, three, four. And the only piece that I didn't show you is how to connect them at the end. So you're going to take toothpicks and connect this triangle to this triangle with a toothpick, just to hold the two sides in place, again, to make sure that it's nice and rigid. So as I was saying, you could put a piece of paper down here on your roadway and drive, if you have little matchbox cars, it would be a perfect activity to use and, and put into your children's playset or a playset at school. So here's our finished truss. Pretty, pretty basic, but as you can see, we have all of our triangles on each side. It might be a fun activity to count them or see if you can come up with other triangular shapes. For example, I made this one other type of truss bridge. Now this is box shaped, but you can see there are triangles in here, every side, so it is a truss. I actually had to use linguine from my pantry for these diagonals here because the toothpicks weren't long enough. So just another fun example of something you can show your children or see if they could come up with something even different than this one here. So here are two bridges, two truss bridges, and I'd love to see if you guys could come up with some other truss bridges too. You could also build something completely different. Uh, here's a little example of a, a small house that I built. Again, very basic in shape, but it, it's also a fun challenge to see if, if your children or your students could build the tallest structure. So keep building cubes on top of this to see how tall they could get or see how long they wanna go. There's just so many opportunities really with these two simple materials and that's why I think it's one of my favorite activities to do. So I'd love to see if you guys could post in the comments or send me a message, any pictures or any ideas that you come up with when you do this activity. Like I said, I think it's just really fun and I hope that your kids and your students really love it too. So those are activities today, building our different bridges and I just wanted to give you a little heads up for what we're doing next week. So next week I thought would be a really fun idea to dive into something that's related to what's going on in the world today. So with COVID, I'm sure it's hard for children to understand, you know, why they're at home, why they can't go and hang out with their friends, or if they're thinking back to years past, why things are different. So I thought it'd be a good idea to introduce to children how soap works and how germs work and how those interact. So it's a very short activity and all you'll need is a bowl. It could be uh, plastic, uh, even paper, uh, or if you have any ceramic, that would be great too. Um, large enough to put your fingers in, but a uh, decent sized bowl and some pepper, and then just have some hand soap or dish soap set off to the side. So again, very easy materials we're gonna be using again next week. Very easy to get your hands on, I think. And it'll be a, just a little activity to show your, your students or your, or your kids at home why soap works, why it's so important that we wash our hands so often nowadays, and um, what we can do at home to help prevent the spread of COVID. So that's going to be our activity next week. 
I'm so excited to see you guys again. And thank you so, so much again for, for tuning in today and building with me. I hope to see your pictures and your comments about what you did. And I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks so much again.